I'm delighted to introduce to you to our next speaker, David Lorimer. Um, David is a prolific writer and lecturer, he's quite famous, and is a program director of the Scientific and Medical Network, um, amongst other things. He's authored and edited numerous books, including The Spirit of Science. Um, and David is going to speak to us on what is possibly the most pressing issue of our day, uh, living in harmony with the earth. David, over to you. Thank you very much indeed uh, for that introduction, um, Stephen. And it's very good to be with you. Some old friends I haven't seen for quite some time. And um, I, I, I appreciate the invitation to speak to you about living in harmony with nature. I've got a few beautiful Taoist type um, images <clears throat> through my presentation. This is the first one, which is the sort of contemplative. You can see the water and the the uh, the, <clears throat> the person in the small boat uh, and just a sense of peace in the landscape. I'm going to start with the Tao Te Ching. <clears throat> um, this is a new translation that you may be able to see here with, um, of um, the Tao Te Ching by the Divine Feminine Tao Te Ching by Rosemary Anderson. And this is number eight. The highest good is like water bringing goodness to all things without struggle. In seeking low places spurned by others, the Tao resembles water. And it continues, for a house, the good is the land. For the mind, the good is depth. And so that, that one's always trying to get back to this primal condition of the uncarved block, undyed silk, and nothing to excess, of Wu Wei, which is acting without acting. As you will know, Thanksgiving is coming up in the US <clears throat> and this week. And, uh, and there's a new take on this in this wonderful book, Braiding Sweetgrass, which I'm going to talk a little bit about by Robin Wall Kimmerer. And she said, we shouldn't be giving our allegiance to the flag. Uh, we should be giving our allegiance to gratitude, which is what Thanksgiving is all about, surely. And this is a, a, a ceremony that is done in third grade um, with uh, children in school. And it reads like this. Today we have gathered, and when we look upon the faces around us, we see that the cycles of life continue. We have been given the duty to live in balance, in harmony with each other and all living things. So now let us bring our minds together as one, as we give greetings and thanks to each other as people. Now our minds are one. And this is a sentiment that has been um, <clears throat> echoed by um, the previous speakers, that we need to come together at a different level. So um, as I'm going to say a little bit about this book as, as uh, context, um, but let me start with this uh, story um, which I was quite struck by, um, and it is that um, a Carol Crow um, was uh, an indigenous ecologist, and she wanted to go to a conference on sustainability, and and so she she had to go and get funding from her elders, and and so she was asked, well, what is this notion of sustainability? What are they talking about? So she gave them some standard definitions, such as the management of natural resources and social institutions in such a manner as to ensure the attainment and continued satisfaction of human needs for present and future generations. And the elders fell quiet for a moment. And then one elder said, this sustainable development sounds to me like they just want to keep on taking like they always have. It's always about taking. You go there and you go there and tell them that in our way, our first thoughts are not what can we take but what can we give to Mother Earth? That's how it's supposed to be. And I think that's an incredibly powerful <clears throat> statement, especially after COP26 and, and whatever you think about it and its outcome, uh, because the, the, the analysis is simply not deep enough. We need a wholesale radical revamping of our worldview, uh, going back to the principles of indigenous wisdom. And that's what I'm going to be arguing <clears throat> uh, today. And as Sarah and Peter have already said, um, we are at a precarious point in our evolution. 
And there's nothing, nothing to suggest necessarily um, that Western civilization as we know it won't decay and collapse in the same way as every other civilization before it. And the notion of progress is, is arguably an illusion unless it is progress in fundamentals, which is spiritual progress, according to Albert Schweitzer. In 1941, Aldous Huxley said technological progress has merely provided us with a more efficient means of going backwards. <clears throat> you might find that rather startling, um, but I think what, what if you start to think what is real progress and progress is in progress in spirituality, progress in humanity, what it means to be deeply humane, um, that is the real progress and what we ought to be focusing on uh, rather than simply on technological progress. So we're in a situation where um, we may need to break down in order to break through. And as Sarah was suggesting, we've created a massive evolutionary challenge um, by uh, the situation in which we've we found ourselves. And, and the way we're going about trying to quote, solve it in, um, is, is really just tinkering with the symptoms and rearranging the deck chairs on, on the Titanic.